Thank you, Chris, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak once again with the media. Um, I'll start off with some numbers. As of this morning, we have a total of 49 patients that we are taking care of within our institutions who are positive for COVID-19. Two of them are at A.R. Gould Hospital, one at Blue Hill Hospital, 23 at Eastern Maine Medical Center, three at Inland Hospital, six at Maine Coast Hospital, two at Mayo Hospital, 10 at Mercy Hospital, and two at Sebastocook Valley Hospital. In addition, we are caring for 14 patients in their home through our home care and hospice agency who are also positive for COVID-19. Our two-week positivity rate stands at 11.45%, and our one-week positivity rate is at 11.36%. Again, that is the total number of positive tests um, divided by the total number of tests run through our Northern Light Health Lab. COVID-19 hospitalizations and test positivity rates have increased in recent days, which serves as a troubling reminder that COVID-19 is still spreading at a high rate in our communities. It may be frustrating to have to continue to take precautions 20 months into the pandemic, but it's still very important. There is a light at the end of the tunnel and getting vaccinated, continuing to wear masks inside while in public, avoiding those who are sick and taking all of the other precautions that we've discussed over the past 20 months will help bring this to an end more quickly. We continue to share our COVID-19 hospitalization graphic with the public that details the number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 who are vaccinated and those who are unvaccinated. The numbers continue to show that those who are vaccinated have lower cases of hospitalization and severe illness. As we've noted before, this graphic represents a snapshot in time and the date is ch data is changing constantly. Today's graphic will be shared in the chat. Northern Light Health is now providing vaccines for children between the ages of five and 11 at many of its locations. We continue to encourage vaccination for everyone who is eligible, as vaccination is the best step in preventing serious illness from COVID-19. While children are not as likely to become seriously ill from COVID-19, children can get very sick and even die from the disease. And by vaccinating children, we reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 to vulnerable family members, friends, and others in the community. There are several different ways that parents and guardians can sign their kids up for to be vaccinated. Many schools in Maine are offering the vaccine, and this will be the most convenient option for many families. Northern Light Health is proud to be working with 18 school districts in their vaccination efforts, supporting more than 100 first and second dose clinics for children. Many of the pharmacies in Maine now have pediatric doses of the vaccine available. Parents and guardians who have questions about the vaccine may find an opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with a pediatrician or family physician to be helpful. This option may be particularly convenient when attending a previously scheduled well visit or other appointment. Parents and guardians can search for available clinics and make appointments right on our website at northernlighthealth.org. Some of our locations are waiting for their supply of vaccine and have not started to take appointments yet. Check our website frequently for the latest on, on uh, appointment availability. Northern Light Health has also been offering monoclonal antibody treatments to patients who meet treatment criteria. We'd like to remind COVID-19 positive individuals who qualify for this time-sensitive treatment to consider requesting a referral. These treatments greatly reduce the risk of serious illness and hospitalization from COVID-19 for those who have the greatest risk. To qualify, individuals must have developed symptoms and tested positive for COVID-19 within the last 10 days and be 65 years of age or older or between the ages of 18 and 64 with a body mass index of 25 or greater or have a high-risk health condition. Please visit northernlighthealth.org slash MAB for more information about these treatments, specific requirements, and to start the referral process. Last year, Mainers greatly limited the amount of flu in our state by wearing masks and practicing physical distancing. An influenza-free winter is not likely this year. In fact, the flu is already in Maine. And while the flu isn't currently widespread, it is very early in the season. I mention this because a typical flu season combined with a COVID-19 surge could make for a very long, difficult winter for hospitals, schools, and our communities. Whether you choose to get the COVID-19 vaccine, please consider getting a flu shot. Not only will it protect you, but it may also help you avoid spreading the flu to someone who is at risk. It is an easy, inexpensive way for you to help keep friends, families, and possibly even yourself out of the hospital. Look for clinics in your community, visit your local pharmacy, or connect with your primary care provider to get it done. Remember that you can receive the COVID vaccine or booster at the same time you receive your flu shot. And with that, I'll turn it over to Paul. Thanks, Dr. Jarvis. So just providing an update regarding our employee vaccination. Uh, now that uh, the state mandate uh, for healthcare workers uh, lapsed, uh, passed on October 30th, um, 
you recall our last conference, uh, I updated the group that we provided a seven-day reconsideration period for our employees who are not compliant with the mandate. And so uh, I'm pleased to report um, we, we ended uh, the moment of the mandate. We had 98.11% of our staff uh, vaccinated and compliant with the state mandate, which meant 191 folks still were not. And so we removed them from the schedule allowed them seven days to reconsider their um, their decision not to be compliant with the state requirement uh, and 14 did change their mind uh, so that means that we had 177 ultimately left us uh, uh, left the organization not eligible to work in maine as a healthcare worker and those remaining 14 uh, are in their vaccination process uh, and will be able to come back to us uh, uh, after this pause in their in their work as they uh, become fully vaccinated so we're pleased with that and truly, the, uh, the high level of vaccination that we have at Northern Light is really attributed to the many clinicians, leaders, staff, friends, neighbors, colleagues, um, working um, with their partners and colleagues uh, to ensure that any questions about hesitancy or information are provided. Um, and so it was really a, a, a very one-to-one uh, -one, uh, interactive process where we had uh, people resolving questions uh, one at a time with staff. And so that thoughtful process led us to such a high vaccination rate. We're very pleased uh, that those numbers uh, are as high as they were, um, as we know that other organizations have not had that same high level of vaccination. So we're certainly pleased and thankful uh, for our staff uh, in all their capacities uh, for what they did to help with this. And that effort continues in our communities as well as Dr. Jarvis mentioned, as we continue to vaccinate uh, those who are newly eligible uh, in, in the pediatric ranks as well as uh, others who still may have some hesitancy. Well, thank you, Paul. I have one last thing to share before we get to questions. Uh, in the early days of the pandemic, there were so many unknowns. Our employees, communities, local and state governments and members of the media had questions. We received several calls daily about COVID-19 and believe that this format would be the most effective way to answer your questions and get information out. For more than a year and a half, with a couple of pauses in between, the briefings have been a great way for us to connect. We're grateful to have the opportunity to meet with you weekly and share information and answer your questions. Now with the health care employee mandate behind us, vaccination for children's five and 11 underway and the holidays right around the corner, we've decided to pause these weekly briefings for the time being. If the need arises, we are prepared to use this format in the future. We appreciate all of your assistance with getting the word out, whether it was vaccination, testing, or new treatments. You've helped us spread timely, credible information. If you have questions about COVID-19 moving forward, we'll still be available to answer them. Simply contact your Northern Light Health Marketing Communication contacts, and they'll connect you with me, Paul, or another person who can answer your questions. I wanna take a minute to thank our marketing and communications folks who have put this together. Uh, Paul and I are, are just the ones that kinda of sit here and talk to you, but it's, they're the ones that do all of the work. And so we thank them, we thank you, the members of the media, and, uh, and now we'll open it up for questions. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Jarvis and Paul. And we'll start the question session right now. And uh, we'll, first up is uh, Allegra Zamori from WABI. Dr. Jarvis, um, I just had a question about how the vaccination um, of those 5 to 11 year olds has been going so far this week um, and what you guys are seeing on your end. Yeah, so for, for us, uh, most of those vaccinations that we've already started have been at school-based clinics. Um, my understanding is the school-based clinics have gone well so to, uh, to date. There have not been a lot of them, um, and we will continue to ramp that up as this week and next week gets going. Uh, today would be the first time that our practices may have the availability of doing vaccination uh, with more of them coming online Thursday and Friday of this week and even more next week. Some of that was limited uh, due to the fact that we did not receive our total allotment of vaccine, vaccine until yesterday and therefore we needed to make sure that, that we had a safe uh, distribution plan um, and then get the vaccine out to our practices. It's why it's important that people go to the website to look and see where in their community vaccine is available and to keep checking back if there is not a suitable location um, at the particular time that you check. Thanks so much. And then second question um, is just, we've heard some feedback from the larger community about just general wait times um, throughout in getting those booster shots, getting vaccines, even flu shots right now, um, with the potential for booster shots to be potentially available to everyone in the next few weeks from Pfizer. Um, is there any consideration on Northern Light to open any sort of booster shot clinics moving forward or what is sort of the trajectory there? Yeah, so across Northern Light, we've had smaller clinics that we've been able to, to stand up. Um, and again, we, we've kind of build those up when we see demand rise. 
and then take them down again as demand falls. Um, and so we will continue to, to watch for what the needs are of our communities um, and try to match them as best we can. We do know that many people have opted now to go to either a local pharmacy or to their primary care provider uh, in order to get their booster shot. Or, in, and again, the, the case of uh, children 5 to 11, their initial vaccine, we continue to encourage those methods. Um, and if we see a need in a particular community, we will try to meet those, those uh, needs as possible. We continue to do pop-up clinics uh, when necessary. Um, and we we will, we will just evaluate that as time goes on. Thank you very much for those questions, Allegra. We're going to move now to WBII, Brooke Riley. You should have the ability to unmute and ask your questions, Brooke. Yes, I, think, uh, I don't think Brooke has questions today. Okay, we're going to move on then to News Center, Maine, Bob Evans. Oh, Bob, hold on one second. You should have the ability now to unmute, Bob. Okay, can you hear me now? We, we can. can, Bob. Awesome, thank you. Uh, you mentioned some school clinics, um, but with COVID cases rising, this is for Dr. Jarvis, by the way. You mentioned some school clinics, but with COVID cases rising and some schools going remote due to staff shortages, uh, Dr. Jarvis, what's your recommendation for one, school districts and two, parents to prevent this from being a bigger problem? Yeah, so first and foremost, if, if you're in a school district that currently does not have school-based clinics set up and that is an interest of yours, please reach out to the school district and encourage them to reach out to either Northern Light Health or one of the other uh, myriad of agencies across the state that are doing school-based clinics. Um, as a state, collectively, we think this is incredibly important and we want to make sure that, we have that all children have access to vaccines should their parents or guardians uh, choose to get them vaccinated. So that's the first and foremost thing, is try to do all protective measures that, that we can. Um, we've seen a significant rise in respiratory viruses, including COVID-19, over the last few weeks, and that becomes challenging. Of course, if people have, have the cold or influenza virus, um, that those mimic the same symptoms as COVID-19, and so we need to put all those, those precautions in place until we can tease out whether somebody's positive for COVID or not. Um, I implore any parent or guardian to keep their child home if their child is sick, regardless of whether they're positive for COVID-19. Um, as much as we want to encourage children being in school, one sick child can then spread that through an entire classroom, through an entire school, or even a school district, and we don't want that to happen, regardless of whether we're talking about COVID-19 or any other respiratory virus. Continue to encourage your children to wear masks at all times when they are in, in a public place, um, in a public setting, and continue to encourage everybody to do good hand, hand hygiene, and if there's anybody in the household who is not yet vaccinated, who is eligible to be vaccinated, please do so as well. The more that we can get, we can limit the amount of virus in our communities, the quicker we'll have kids back in school full time without the fear of needing to go remote. So thank you for the question. Um, and my second question is, uh, some parents around the state have been critical of the availability of appointments for their kids' COVID vaccine. Do you expect to reopen the Cross Insurance Center or any of the other larger facilities that you had open uh, to expand access? So we do not expect that we will have a need to do that, um, mostly because of population size. The number of children who are now eligible for vaccine is relatively small compared to what we were talking about when we were vaccinating all adults over the age of 18. And so having to have a large scale clinic really isn't, isn't necessary uh, in that regard. The reason why we're seeing delays um, right now in appointments is simply because we just started to receive the vaccine. And as I said, uh, here at Eastern Maine Medical Center, we did not receive the vaccine until yesterday. Um, and so therefore, there's always going to have to be a little bit of a delay uh, from the time this, the vaccine first arrives to us and us being able to, to set it up to be in our clinics. Um, and we're dependent on the state and the federal government for that and can't change that um, as it goes. But we will continue to add more appointments as we get more vaccine and try to make it as convenient as possible. Like I said, for children, um, when we've talked about vaccination in the past, particularly around influenza, school-based vaccination is the most efficient way for us to get large-scale um, vaccine out there um, in, a, in a very short amount of time. And again, we have many uh, clinics already set up with the anticipation that we will continue to receive more vaccine um, and be able to do that. And again, being able to offer it in our practices as well is just another added convenience for some parents and guardians. Hey, thank you for those questions, Bob. And, uh, um, Bob and, and Allegra, uh, if you guys have follow-up questions, um, indicate so in the chat box, because we we'll probably will have time. We've just got to get through two more um, first rounds of questions, and that's uh, David Marino right now from Bangor Daily News. Uh, you're up next. 
think David, too, uh, didn't have questions, Chris. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to go to Joe Lawler from Portland Press Hell. Joe, uh, don't limit yourself to two questions. If you have an a extra follow-up or, 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 or two, please feel free to, to, uh, to ask them. I do have questions today, but I, I think just two, but <laughs> thank you. That's uh, okay. We can have Molly, too. This is <laughs> your chance, Joe. I was about to say Chris, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess just uh, getting back to the school-based uh, 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 clinics, if, if we can get um, uh, a little bit more specific on numbers, I would appreciate that. I think um, uh, one of your communications folks uh, yesterday had told me that uh, they're doing uh, 18 school districts, um, but from what I understand, uh, in the next few weeks or so, you plan to expand that. So I, I guess I'm just wondering uh, when you're fully um, when you're you know, you're fully uh, uh, um, have as many cl cl school-based clinics as you can do. How, how what's your estimate on how many districts you'll be doing? Northern Light will be doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any exact numbers on that. Again, for, for Northern Light Health, that's actually a multidisciplinary approach. Most of our school-based clinics are handled by our home care and hospice teams, uh, but many of our local hospitals are able to manage them in, in their local communities. Um, Blue Hill is a great example. Blue Hill Hospital will be having a community-based vaccine clinic. Um, and so it, it really is a little bit varied and, and tough to narrow that down. And at the same time, we also know that there are always going to be changes. Obviously, if a school needs to go remote, that's not the place that we want to be doing a, a school-based clinic. So those numbers are kind of in flux. So unfortunately, I don't have any exact numbers. Um, but like I said, any school district that currently does not have any school-based clinics planned and would like to, um, or if there's parents out there that are concerned that their school districts are not uh, having one, please reach out to us. And if we can't serve that particular community, we can assist in one, having one of our partners look into whether they can as well. Um, you know, and we are, we are dedicated uh, and, and enthusiastic about our partnership um, here in the Bangor, greater Bangor area. Penobscot Community Health Center handles almost all of the school-based clinics. They've been doing that for a long time with, uh, with their influenza clinic. And uh, so it just really depends on the particular region. But again, we can put people in touch with partnerships if, if we don't cover that particular area. I mean, even if you don't know how many, I mean, do you think that 18 number will be quite a bit higher, say, three or four weeks from now? Yeah, I really don't know because I don't know the, the you know, I'm not involved in the logistics of, of each individual school district, and it really just depends, again, um, on that regional approach. So um, we cover many more um, uh, schools in the southern part of the state than we do in the northern part of the state, just simply because of what's already been set up in, in, in those communities. Okay, thanks. And my second question is um, just about hospitalizations. Uh, statewide, the hospitalization numbers are uh, quite a bit higher. Um, but uh, are you seeing that uh, dynamic in, um, in the Bangor region, or is that mostly uh, happening out in western Maine, um, and how is it affecting hospital services? So looking, you know, just kind of looking at the zip codes where individuals who have been hospitalized are coming from, it does appear that we continue to have that issue of our more rural counties um, where the vaccination rates unfortunately are lower um, are where the predominant of the patients that we're seeing here at Northern Light Health. Um, and again, you can just see as I, I counted off, uh, you know, almost all of our hospitals currently have uh, a few people that or more who are positive for COVID. And so, you know, this is becoming a, a very widespread condition for us. Um, many of the ones, though, that are here at Eastern Maine Medical Center were sent here from another location. And so, um, again, it's, it's that caution. Uh, areas where there's a low vaccination rate, the virus is going to find a way to infect as many people as it can. And so, really, it's a, yet another encouragement for those who have not yet been vaccinated who are eligible. Please go out and get your primary series. Those who are eligible for their booster shots, I recommend that they get their booster shot as well. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Joe. Okay, and I, I guess we'll have one follow-up from Allegra Zamore. Uh, I'll let her ask her question, and then I think we'll, we'll be ready to wrap. Hey, thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to see if you had any sort of words of wisdom or advice for people as we do head into these holiday um, times and months and the weather is getting colder. What are you guys expecting to see in terms of just COVID, flu, and all of the above and what you offer as advice to people? Yeah, so uh, my crystal ball has not always been very accurate, but I can say that if we let our guard down and we no longer practice all of those good things that we've been talking about, 
uh, we're in for a, a difficult winter. Um, we will have beds that will be occupied by individuals who have influenza, individuals with COVID-19, as well as those individuals who, uh, who need our services regardless of what the predominant respiratory virus is that's out there. Uh, so my words of wisdom are, please, if you're out in public, wear face coverings. We know there will be more people out in stores um, during the holiday season as they, as they go out shopping and preparing for the holidays. Um, I encourage people not to gather in large settings. Um, if you're going to have a family gathering, you know, please try to enforce that same kind of uh, atmosphere that we've been talking about. Encourage those in your family who are not yet vaccinated to get vaccinated. Um, and lastly, if you're not feeling well, it is not the time to go visit grandma and grandpa. It is not the time to go and travel around the country. If you're not feeling well, stay home, uh, do a Zoom Christmas if, that, if that's what you need to do. Um, but we really need to get all of these viruses under control, particularly that causes COVID-19, uh, in order to make sure that our hospitals and our healthcare system can stay open for all of the other needed reasons that we are all the time. We need to be available for people with heart attacks, for women who are, want, who are in labor and, and are, want to deliver their baby in a, in a, set, in a, in a healthy and safe setting. Um, and we need to be available for, for preventative care and to take care of people's chronic diseases. Thankfully, Northern Light Health has been able to maintain that during this pandemic. And we really need assistance from the public so that we can continue to maintain all of those services. So thank you for the opportunity to, to remind people of that. Okay, and I promise this will be the last one, Dr. Jarvis. <laughs> Bob Evans, uh, Bob Evans chimed in at the last minute and said he had one more question. So I figured to be fair, I'd give him his opportunity too. So go ahead, Bob. Uh, Dr. Jarvis, this should be an easy one for you. Just a clarification um, from the, one of the last ones I did with you, there was a little confusion. Who exactly needs the boosters? Yeah, so right now the CDC recommends that any person who have received the Johnson & Johnson or the Janssen vaccine, the one and done shot, if they're over the age of 18, they should get a booster shot. If it's been two months since the last time that they, since the time that they received that first dose. And so, so that's a large number of people who received the Johnson & Johnson. For Pfizer and Moderna, anyone who is over the age of 65 should receive a booster shot. Anyone between the ages of 49 and 65 who have underlying health conditions, and that's pretty much just about anything, including uh, being overweight or obese, um, should also receive the booster shot. Anyone 18 to 49, that age group, if you have health conditions, should consider getting the booster shot. And anyone who's in an occupation where they are in contact with multiple people of, from the public on a regular basis, such as healthcare workers, first responders, grocery workers, those that work in food services, they should also consider getting the booster vaccine. We do know that right now there's a, that Pfizer has asked for authorization from the FDA to allow booster shots for anyone over the age of 18 who has received the, who have received, uh, the Pfizer vaccine as their initial series. There was a recent report um, out from the CDC about uh, uh, a group of veterans that they followed over time. Um, good news is, as they said, that people who were vaccinated were far less likely to re be re um, require hospitalization um, or die. And those who received a booster shot, regardless of whether they initially had Pfizer, Moderna, or Janssen, Johnson & Johnson or the Janssen vaccine, all of them had much, uh, had much less likely to have hospitalization, severe disease, or death. So yet another indication vaccines work. So thank you for the opportunity to put that message out. I also want to say thank you to all the veterans out there uh, for their service. Um, and, uh, and please, uh, if you see a veteran tomorrow, please thank them for their service. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And we'll let that be the last word for what uh, will be our last virtual press conference uh, for the time being as we're putting the pause on. Thank you, members of the media, for your participation in these. And uh, Dr. Jarvis or Paul, are you all set or any closing closing thoughts? Just despite rumors, I am not taking over for Brian Williams on the 11th hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. thanks, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.